What's going on guys, this is Win, and in this video I'll be showing you guys how you can import a CAD assembly into MATLAB animation by means of using sim mechanics. Now keep in mind that sim mechanics and simulink is not the same as the animation feature because in sim mechanics it is mainly used for systems in which there is no motion, like overall motion. So here I have a small setup, a block and a little tube and in my animation, what I want to do is, I, I want to separate this tube from, from the block, right? So I want to add a force in the positive y direction, as you can see here, to add a force and to move the tube up and to separate that tube from the block, right? So now I now you want to need a constraint here because I'm moving this there. So it is, I'm, I'm able to move it there, as you can see. So the first thing I want to do is save your assembly first. Okay, so I'll just press rebuild and save it. And one thing you should have installed is Simscape multibody. So make sure you go on Simscape multibody and install it because you need that to save your assembly into an STL file. And then from that STL file, you can make a VRML world in MATLAB. So what I'll show you is here. So when, so once you install Simscape multibody, you need to first export the file. So to, so to do that, I'm going to go on Tools. You, you will see, once you install Simscape Multibody, you will see this here. Go on Export. And you want to, and don't click Second Generation, you want First Generation. So I will save this to my desktop. So I will save, save it there. And then press Save. So it should take a while. It's going to scan your two bodies and save it as the assembly. So just give, give it a second here. You see that? It, that's the tube. That's the block. And it's saving the two. So it'll say, once it saves, it'll give you this confirmation here. Oh, I, I just pressed OK there, sorry. So, And you can close the command window, which pops up. So now you can see that it has been saved there and so I press ok and now you have these files here so that's your XML file as it says there and these are two step files step files and once you have it saved here you want to go into MATLAB go to your desktop folder because that's where I saved it in this case so I'll go on C users my name desktop and you want to copy these, this line here. Now zoom out and here you have to type in CD, open bracket, control C it there and then press enter. And now you can see that it has moved to my desktop so it has all these files here. The ones which I'm interested in are these files because that's my CAD assembly. So I will zoom out there and the function you want to use for this case for MATLAB is STL to VRML and type in your XML file. So in my case it is a sem.xml so I will type that in here. Press enter. So now what it does, so now you can see that it has made a world, a VRML world. That's your assembly and then this assembly links to both these files there. So I'm going to explain that to you. So, so it, it's here, and I will, so that's my assembly here, and I will click and edit with Notepad++. Plus plus. So, so what this is saying, that's your assembly, that's my tube, because you know, I had a block and a tube, the tube's name is detach1, that's the part file name, so that's this, and that's my assembly, right? So these, so these two bodies here are linked to this assembly. So detach and base, and base is that square block which I made before. So that is showing you the assembly format. And one thing keep in mind is that since the URL does not link to a separate folder, what this URL is saying is that if you want this line of code to work, you need to have your assembly file and your two CAD files in the same folder always. Correct? So I will exit from there and all these files are on my desktop here as you can see. Okay, so now if I open them, it'll just show a block, right? So what you want to do is 
don't use the VRAM builder. Use the one, the new one. It's much better. I've spent the past week learning it, and it's not that difficult at all. So I mean, so what I mean is, you want to first go on preferences, presenter. And you want to go into your Simulink animation. Now, you want to set this as your VRML editor. In my last video, I used this one, but then it's much better if you use this one because this one is optimized for assemblies and so on. So I will press OK and press OK there. So now, OK, so now it's made something here and I will double click my assembly. And it should open that in the VRM, sorry, in the VRML world. So see, see, that was a quick, right? So that's my, you can zoom in and stuff. You can do that. So I will open this file. So I'll quickly make a background here. So what you want to do is go on nodes, insert from component library, and it takes you to your VRML save directory. So you want to click on backgrounds. And I will just pick a random one. I will pick blue, green, pale. So it should show a nice background there. I will also create a viewpoint on this assembly. So what I'm saying is I want the camera to move with the object. So you want to go on children. I'm just going to do that. Uh, let's say um, this camera can be anywhere you want. So I'll go on base. And I will go on uh, children here. Let's see if this works. So I'm on children right now. Nodes. Add a bindable viewpoint so now this viewpoint is there so now I will call it something so I'm gonna zoom back out there I will call it uh, see a far let's call it that your position I'll make it close somewhere a uh, 005 and if you want to go to the viewpoint you want to go on viewpoint right click go to viewpoint so it should take you there and I will save that just a quick tutorial so okay so now we have the assembly imported into MATLAB but now you want to add some motion to it right now if, if you use sim mechanics so you know like you, you guys know that there's two forms of animation in MATLAB right one animation is simulink animation the next one is sim mechanics but sim mechanics is mostly meant for systems which don't move as a whole I mean like just the sub assembly parts of it move so for this case it is best to use sim the the MATLAB animation. Okay, so I'm going to type in Simulink. I will make a new file by clicking this icon here. Just give it two minutes. And I will and have it there. So first thing I will do is drag in VR Sync. So now I have the VR sync in there and I will load the world into this this thing. So you want, what you want to do is double click this thing and so find the world which you had. So browse and go on your desktop. And you want you want the assembly. You don't want the separate cat files because the assembly includes both these cat files. So what I will do is drag the assembly there. And you want to set translation nodes. I explained all this in more detail in my past video, so please watch those if you didn't yet already. It explains the basics of animation and so on. So now I have, so, so you know, so this thing here, these six, sorry, no, these seven blocks, these are for the whole assembly. So if I click translation, this means to move the whole assembly. So move both parts, not move just, you know, just one of them. Now I'm going to, so my idea is I will move the whole assembly at first and then separately detach the pin, sorry, the the, the tube. So I just need a, a translation there, right? Because the base will continue to move. So, and this translation moves both these objects. So I just need to separate this thing here because I will add a force in the Y direction. So for just this part, not the base, the base will stay as, as it is, right? So. Just making that clear. And as I said before, this assembly translation moves both the parts. So that they will move as one and then one will separate from the other. 
and you'll see what I mean like after right so so I'll hit apply there hit OK and I'll quickly make a small block diagram for this thing I will go on clock sorry no okay okay I see why I was going constant here I will go on the aerospace block side because it contains equations of motion. So I will go on. Uh, here we go, equations of motion. Body axis, drag this in here. So what I'm saying is your x is this way, right? Left to right. So I will drag. I will keep a force of 1 newtons. I will say, I will turn off my g force. So I'll leave, I'll leave it at 0 here just for. And your initial speed should be zero as well. Okay, there. So I'll drag this in. And you want the VR signal expander. And once again, I explained this significantly in my last video. So please refer to those if you didn't do not yet. And okay, where's it gone here? It should, it should, it should be somewhere here. Okay, I'm just going to type an expander. Let's see what, what, what happens there. Okay, here, see see that? So we can drag this in, and you're moving it in an X only, right? So you want to drag X and Z, but it's only going to move in X. So uh, set this to 1 and 2. So now it's taking me here. Now it's in your assembly or translation file. So let's quickly test this thing. Let's save it first to my desktop. Give it a second there. Let's see what happens. Okay, so it did something. Okay, you see that there? It's moving in X. Let's try try again. This time I'll zoom in, hit play. And see the X X X is moving there? So that means I had a force in just the x direction. Okay, so okay, so now let's separate the tube, right? So, so okay, so let's say that after ten seconds, I want the tube to separate from the block, right? So what I will do is copy this thing, paste it here. Let's do this quickly. I'm pretty sure you guys have stuff to work on as well. So this time I will add a force in z, but then I only want to add the force after a certain time has passed, right? So of course I need clock. Because clock keeps track track of time. So what I will say is add a if statement here. Come on, this should be. Again, I explained if statements before, so please watch my first videos. So I will drag this thing quickly here. Uh, set this to ten seconds. And now you want an if action subsystem. Delete this input here and use one the output. So I'll copy and paste this there. So now let's see what this thing does, right? So drag it to your Z, keep this the way it is, and you want to move it to your detach because this block here, sorry, no, this thing here, it only moves the tube after a certain time has passed. So I'm going to put that there and let me just try compiling it, see what it does.